You and Ms. Irani don't concur on the idea of India. Well, I think it's fairly clear from what I've said and what she said. All right. Okay. So, um, you spoke of in your speech that um, every person across India uh, has an equal right to the idea of India. But, uh, Dr. Tharoor, would you reckon that what has made this India movement right now, also somewhere down the line, and we can't be in denial of it, is the alienation of possibly the majority community that we see now the assertion of this naked, raw, belligerent Hindutva? You know, the fact is that politicians, I'm afraid, have to bear an awful lot of responsibility for much of what communities are told they ought to feel. If Hindus are repeatedly told that a particular minority is pampered and spoiled and appeased and all such language, it flies in the face of the basic facts that show that that community is disproportionately poor, disproportionately undereducated, underrepresented in the armed forces, the civil services, and the elite professions, and overrepresented in the prisons. Now, is that a, a community that has been pampered by us for 75 years? I think we've got to be objective, look at the facts, and say, we all have challenges. There are peculiar reasons why that community is behind. But instead of blaming them, particularly for the sins of ancestors long dead and buried, it's, it's a way of dividing a country that needs unity. And unity does not mean uniformity, as some people in the ruling establishment seem to think. Dr. Tharu, do you really see it being limited to just politicians? Because uh, um, the sheer fact that we are talking about uh, the emergence of uh, uh, what you call toxic Hindutva, for a lot it's not toxic Hindutva. It's a long time in the coming. You, you don't see it like that? It can't be a creation of just the politicians. Look, human beings are certainly sort of seducible by the argument that they are better than others. They're seducible by the proposition that they can hold their head up high and be much, there's much to be proud of. The irony, and I've written about this extensively in my books, Why I'm a Hindu and the Hindu Way, is that I see a lot to be proud of in being a Hindu, but I don't see my pride as a Hindu coming at the expense of any other community. It's not a question of my being better than someone else. It's my being descended from a faith that has a lot that I can cherish, and from ancestors who've achieved a great deal that perhaps we haven't done enough to acknowledge during the colonial period. So let's revive all of that, let's celebrate it. Why must it be at the expense of another community or communities? That's where I part company with the Hindutva movement. See, when Vivekananda talked about Hindus in India arise, awake, he wanted them to awake to their own great possibilities, anchored in the sense of inclusion, rather than the kind of exclusionary interpretation that the Hindutva movement has brought to our country. But Dr. Tharoor, that's your idea of India. And uh, quite a few would suggest that don't be patronizing to somebody else's idea of India. And for them, they do feel that they've been possibly alienated. And for them, they need to assert themselves, even if it comes through religion. Look, in any democracy, everyone is entitled to their own ideas. Uh, certainly, I'm entitled to mine. They're entitled to theirs. As long as they have power, they'll think that theirs is the one that must prevail. But you know, the tables can always be turned. That's what the ballot box is for. But equally, let me say very clearly that whatever their ideas of India, mine is anchored very firmly in the Constitution. There's nothing I've said today that departs from what the Constitution prescribes for all of us. Is that true of what they've been saying? That's the question they need to ask themselves. You talk about uh, Dr. Ambedkar. Uh, what would be, you've spoken extensively about that also in your uh, vision document, but what would be your critique of it if you had to make one? What would be? Your critique of it, if you had to make No, I'm actually a big fan of him because I've written a book about him very recently, and his ideas and speeches and writings are very much fresh in my mind. Uh, I'm afraid that one of his biggest objections was to the idea of Hindu Raj, which is why there's a delicious irony to Ambedkar being extolled by the Hindutva movement, because he was quite savage in his critique of the idea of majoritarian rule, particularly one based on religious community identities. I have to tell you that very simply, he believed very passionately in the principles that were espoused in the Constitution. He made a couple of remarkable speeches when the document was finally to be passed by the Constituent Assembly, uh, which uh, really have stood the test, the test of time. I've quoted them extensively in my short book on Ambedkar, so I hope some of you will go to it and, and read. Um, but at bottom, as he said, in any case, there are problems in our society. He said, we've created a society with uh, one person, one vote, 
But I mean, a, a, a constitution with one person, one vote, but we have a society where one person doesn't have the same value as another person. We're one man, one vote, but not one man, one value. And he said, we have essentially put our liberal democracy or as a top soil, as a dressing, onto a soil that is fundamentally undemocratic and illiberal. Strong language. But he wanted us to transform ourselves and our society. I think he would, for example, have been pleased to see someone like a Dalit woman becoming a chief minister. But at the same time, he would have wanted to see much more profound changes right across the way in which our system works. And to my mind, ours is still a work in progress. It's still unfinished. The challenges still remain. But we've done a lot of good things until, unfortunately, a change has come about in the way in which we are perceiving ourselves in our society, which I think has diminished us in many ways, not only in terms of our politics, but in the eyes of the world. That was unfortunate.